Welcome back. This is a Massey Ferguson backhoe. It's a model 300 tractor and motor with a model 54 backhoe attachment. It's old, probably from the 1960s. It's pretty sloppy, pretty loose. She's been around the block a few times. It's here because it has some major hydraulic oil leaks. I know, first time for everything, right? The major source of our leaking is right here. Well, she's got a few hydraulic cylinder seals blown out. That's nothing exciting. You guys have seen me fix those multiple times, but this bad boy right here is something entirely different. This is the swing motor or swing cylinder that actually swings the, the whole backhoe. And I believe this unit is made by Sesta, the same people who make airplanes. Inside this big barrel, there's two fins and it fills up with oil on either side of those fins and creates a rotational torque, a huge amount of torque. These things are extremely powerful for their size. And there's a shaft that passes through the barrel, comes out at the top and the bottom, and it's leaking, just pouring oil out of this top seal. So between this section here and this section, there's a couple of seals and they must be totally smoked. So our project for today is to get this whole swing motor up and out of here, get it apart, figure out what we need. There's a rebuild kit available, but it's like $800. So I don't know if we're gonna do that or if we're just gonna piece it together. I guess we'll find out when we get it apart. I believe it's possible to take this out without removing this whole trunnion assembly. Gotta take the hoses off, take this top pin loose, slide it up, there's a big bolt down here, and then we should be able to kind of somehow lift this thing up and jockey it out. Guess we'll see. I've never done one of these before, but my brother has, so we've got a lifeline. Yeah, some of these hoses aren't looking too good. Get to use this fancy Bonnie 7 8 line wrench sent to me by a kindly viewer. size is that thing. Oh. Yeah. Well, those weren't tight at all. So I made sure there was no weight on this top pin when I set the boom down. Good night. Whew. So you want that one jumping out of there? Yeah. That's not OSHA approved, but I think it'll work.
There's a couple of problems with this center shaft. Got a gouge here at the top. This side's the good side. So it's pretty, pretty substantial on the other side. Goes, I don't know, 120 degrees around. Anyway, I did some measuring and I believe this gouge is well above the ceiling surface. You can actually see on the chrome here where it's a little bit worn, that's the seal surface. But the bigger problem is the splines. Now this shaft is hard as a coffin nail, but it still has worn the splines down pretty substantially, at least compared to what I've seen in pictures of other ones. And it's chipped up and corroded pretty badly. There's nothing we can do about that. We're not gonna be replacing this shaft. Yep, yeah. hot dog in a hallway. It's probably got now 10 degrees of slop. Well, there's not a lot of options to fix this problem. This part's not available. The dealer doesn't even have a listing for it, I asked. If it was available, I don't know if it would really solve the problem because I think there's an equal amount of wear in this part and in the bottom of that, in the motor shaft. Well, if you look here, that's the witness line, I think right there, of where the spline was originally cut. And same on the other side, so. I'd say that tooth is worn down to about a third of its original size. And they're all like that. So, yeah, what are you gonna do? That's not gonna last forever. But, it'll work for now. All right, folks, talked to the customer, told him about the sloppy splines. He said, put her back together, so. That's what we're gonna do. I also have a box full of parts. There's just over $750 worth of seals in here. And about $400 worth of that is just for this swing portion here. That's not the full rebuild, so we're not gonna be replacing this square seal and some of the other little bits and bobs inside this drum. It's just the bare essentials, but still. I've never been to an Agco factory, but they must be chiseling these things out of solid gold. This single backup ring right here, I don't know what it is, nylon or Teflon or something, $126. Crazy. Anyway, there's the seals, the main important seals. So it's a little bit different design. Before it had this quad ring and that's gonna be replaced by a two-piece seal. So it's got kind of a wear band and then a softer seal like this. So I don't know if it's better or worse or what it is, it's just different. Anyway, everything's, well, except for the drum, everything's cleaned up. Let's start putting it back together. Okay, start with our priceless backup ring. $126. Okay, well that's how it shows it in the 
breakdown that she gave me. So it's rubber, then the wear band, and then the backup ring. So the wear band should touch the ring. But that thing is sticking in there pretty far. That's gonna be, <laughs> I bet it's gonna be fun to get her back together. All right, first goes the baby washer. Then I think we'll put the seal in. Like so. Then we'll attempt to wedge the spiral snap ring in between the two. Which I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not. I really don't. Okay, got the seals installed in the bottom. Same setup down there. The only difference is I was able to reuse the backup ring. It was in pretty good shape. <laughs> well, we finally got it. That's a, uh, yeah, pretty tight fit. Well, the best thing probably would have been to put it in the press and just push on this shaft, but the thing's way too heavy for me to try to cart over there. Anyway, a little persuasion from the dead blow with some help from some bar clamps and she finally sucked in. All right, should be the same, roughly the same process on the top side. I did replace these two O-rings and the big O-ring around the outside. Might have been able to get away with reusing those, but I don't know, it seems like it never works out very well. They get flattened out and then they don't want to seal. I did also run a tap through all of the 5 8 holes and the three half inch holes and then it pushed up a burr around the half inch holes where we were using those 5 8 screws as jam, kind of jam screws. So I took a scraper and then a stone and just clean that off or smooth that off so if there's a burr here it could hold that plate up and you won't get good crush on your o-rings yeah i think we're ready we've got to drop in those check valves Actually, I believe these go in after the cap is on. That's more like it. I'll see if we can draw it down. Just 
be careful not to get one side ahead of the other. It's just this top seal that's holding this up. That's it. So the check balls go in first, then the cages. That's that. She don't turn easy, but at least it does turn. Well, the battery died on me. Hopefully I didn't lose too much footage. When Panasonic says one bar, they're not kidding around. Anyway, hoses are tight, bolts are tight, everything's assembled. Let's test it out. Right, guys that's it for the swing cylinder rebuild like I said it's really not too bad of a job it's just a bummer that the splines were so worn you know 10 degrees may not seem like a whole lot but when you had that boom extended it's pretty sloppy it's gonna make running this machine a challenge and I think it's a common problem my brother said the one he did was in about the same shape it's just a poor design and a lot of companies use these rotary cylinders you know, John Deere, International, I think even Ford. And it just seems like a bad design. Anyway, I pulled it outside. I want to do some pressure washing before I tackle the other leaks. I think it may have a pinhole in the bottom of the hydraulic reservoir. And then a couple of the hoses are rotten. He told me he thought there were 28 hoses on this machine that needed to be replaced. So we're going to do the worst ones first. And also the front bucket cylinders 
they won't hold pressure you see how fast it's leaking down I haven't sped the video up this is in real time so the front bucket is kinda like your stabilizer while you're digging and if it won't hold pressure that's a that's a problem so a lot of times people think that the the problem is in the valve if the cylinder won't hold pressure but it's almost always in the cylinder the piston seals get worn and then it leaks internally from one side of the piston to the other and the way you can tell is that it won't hold pressure in both directions so if it's a problem with the valve it would almost always be a leak only in one direction but you see just with my weight the cylinders coming down pretty fast so I don't know if I'll make a video about fixing those or not they're pretty simple cylinders I did find that the rod was bent in the one closest to me and then I'm having trouble getting parts it has a VPEC seal that, that's obsolete from Agco and yeah I've had a lot of pro a lot of problems getting parts from Agco and if they do have them they're really proud of them well, anyway thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time